The Making of a Nation, The Beginnings of Israel's History by Charles Foster Kent and Jeremiah Whipple Jinks This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Bible's Message to Modern Life, Twelve Studies on the Making of a Nation, The Beginnings of Israel's History by Charles Foster Kent Jeremiah Whipple Jinx, 1912. The best of allies you can procure for us is the Bible. That will bring us the reality, freedom. Garibaldi. If the common schools have found their way from the Atlantic to the Pacific, if slavery has been abolished, if the whole land has been changed from a wilderness into a garden of plenty, from ocean to ocean, if Education has been fostered according to the best lights of each generation since then. If industry, frugality, sobriety are the watchwords of the nation, as I believe them to be, I say it is largely due to those first immigrants who, landing with the English Bible in their hands and their hearts, established themselves on the shores of America. Joseph H. Choket and, as it is owned, the whole scheme of Scripture is not yet understood. So, if it comes to be understood, it must be in the same way as natural knowledge is come at, by the continuance and progress of learning and liberty, and by particular persons attending to, comparing and pursuing imitations scattered up and down it, which are overlooked and disregarded by the generality of the world. Nor is it at all incredible that a book which has been so long in the possession of mankind should contain many truths as yet undiscovered. Butler Mr. Lincoln, as I saw him every morning, in the carpet slippers he wore in the house and the black clothes no tailor could really make fit his gaunt, bony frame, was a homely enough figure. The routine of his life was simple, too. It would have seemed a treadmill to most of us. He was an early riser. When I came on duty at eight in the morning, he was often already dressed and reading in the library. There was a big table near the center of the room. There I have seen him reading many times. And the book? It was the Bible which I saw him reading while most of the household slept. William H. Cook in Harper's Magazine the Bible has such power for teaching righteousness that even to those who come with it, with all sorts of false notions about the God of the Bible, it yet teaches righteousness and fills them with the love of it. How much more those who come to it with a true notion about the God of the Bible. Matthew Arnold Introduction The Rediscovery of the Bible in the early centuries, thousands turned to the Bible as drowning men to a life buoy because it offered them the only way of escape from the intolerable social and moral ills that attended the death pangs of the old heathenism. Then came the Dark Ages, with their resurgent heathenism and barbarianism, when the Bible was taken from the hands of the people. In the hour of a nation's deepest humiliation and moral depravity, John Wycliffe, with the aid of a devoted army of lay priests, gave back the Bible to the people, and in so doing laid the foundations for England's intellectual, political, and moral greatness. The joy and inspiration of the Protestant reformers was the rediscovery and popular interpretation of the Bible. In all the great forward movements of the modern centuries, the Bible has played a central role the ultimate basis for our magnificent modern scientific and material progress is the inspiration given to the human race by the Protestant Reformation. Unfortunately, the real meaning and message of the Bible has been in part obscured during past centuries by dogmatic interpretations. The study of the Bible has also been made a solemn obligation rather than a joyous privilege. The remarkable discoveries of the present generation and its new and larger sense of power and progress have tended to turn men's attention from the contemplation of the heritage which comes to them from the past. The result is that most men know little about the Bible. 
they are acquainted with its chief characters such as abraham david and jesus a few are even able to give a clear-cut outline of the important events of israel's history but they regard it simply as a history whose associations and interests belong to a bygone age how many realize that most of the problems which israel met and solved are similar to those which today are commanding the absorbing attention of every patriotic citizen and that of all existing books the old testament makes the greatest contributions to the political and social as well as to the religious thought of the world national expansion taxation centralization of authority civic responsibility the relation of religion to politics and to public morality were as vital and insistent problems in ancient Israel as they are in any live progressive nation today. The gradual discovery of this fact explains why here and there throughout the world the leaders in modern thought and progress are studying the Bible with new delight and enthusiasm, not only because of its intrinsic beauty and interest, but because in it they find, stated in clearest form, the principles which elucidate the intricate problems of modern life. The Objects of These Studies There are two distinct yet important ways of interpreting the Bible. The one is that of the scholar who knows the Bible from the linguistic, historical, and literary point of view. The other, that of a man who knows life and who realizes the meaning and value of the Bible to those who are confronted by insistent social, economic, and individual problems. These studies aim to combine both methods of interpretation. Briefly defined, the chief object of these studies are 1. To introduce the men and women of today to that which is most vital in the literature and thought of the Old Testament. Two. To interpret the often neglected Old Testament into the language of modern life, simply and directly, and in the light of that which is highest in the teachings of Christianity. 3. To present the constructive results of the modern historical and literary study of the Bible, not dogmatically, but tentatively, so that the reader and student may be in a position to judge for himself regarding the conclusions that are held by a large number of biblical scholars and to estimate their practical religious value. 4. To show how closely the Old Testament is related to the life of today and how it helps to answer the pressing questions now confronting the nations. 5. To lead strong men to think through our national, social, and individual problems, and to utilize fearlessly and practically the constructive results of modern method and research in the fields of both science and religion. The Plan of Work These studies are planned to meet the needs of college students and adult Bible classes. Those who are able to command more time and wish to do more thorough work will find in the list of parallel readings on the first page of each study carefully selected references to the best authorities on the subject treated. For their guidance are also provided subjects for further study. In using this textbook, the student may proceed as follows. 1. Read carefully the biblical passage indicated in connection with each title. For example, in the first study, Genesis 1 and 2. 2. Read the biblical and other quotations on the first page of each study. Unless otherwise indicated, the biblical quotations are from the American Revised Version. They include the most important biblical passages. The other quotations embody some of the best contributions of ancient and modern writers to the subject under consideration. 3. Read and think through the material presented under each paragraph. This material is arranged under six headings for the convenience of those who wish to follow the plan of daily reading and study. Books of Reference The books suggested in connection with this course have been carefully selected in order that each person may have for his individual use a practical working library. The following should be at hand for constant reference. Kent, C.F., 
The Historical Bible, Volumes 1 and 2, contains the important biblical passages arranged in chronological order and provided with the historical, geographical, and archaeological notes required for the clear understanding. The translation is based on the oldest manuscripts and embodies the constructive results of modern biblical research. New York, one dollar each. Jinx, J.W. Principles of Politics, New York, dollar twenty-five. Prepared to explain the principles by which the political action is governed, and thus to aid thoughtful citizens both to gain a clear outlook on life and wisely to direct their own political activity. Aristotle, Politics. The greatest masterpiece of scientific political thought. Its different point of view will suggest many illuminating comparisons between Greek and modern political ideas and institutions, and give the reader a broad basis for the appreciation of that which is essential and enduring in the statecraft of all ages. $2.50 For further parallel study, the following books are suggested. Breasted J. H. History of the Ancient Egyptians Clear, concise, and informative. New York, dollar twenty-five. Bryce James, The American Commonwealth, Volumes One, Two. New York, two dollars each. Best commentary on American government. Cooper C. S. The Bible and Modern Life presents the point of view from which the Bible may most profitably be studied and contains valuable suggestions regarding the organization and work of college and adult classes. New York, dollar twenty-five. Driver, S. R. Introduction to the Literature of the Old Testament, New York, two dollars fifty cents. A sane, thorough study of the origin, history, and contents of the Old Testament books. Goodspeed, G. S. History of the Babylonians and Assyrians, New York, dollar twenty-five. A comprehensive and attractive picture of the life of these ancient people. Hadley, A.T., Standards of Public Morality, New York, $1. A Suggestive Study of the Application of Moral Principles to the Life of Society. Hastings, James, Dictionary of the Bible, Volumes 1 through 5, New York, $6 each. A Summary of the Historical, Literary, Geographical, and Archaeological Facts which Constitute the Background of the Life and Thought of the Bible. Kent, C.F., The Beginnings of Hebrew History and Israel's Historical and Biographical Narratives, Volumes 1 and 2 of Students' Old Testament, $2.75 each, presents in a clear modern translation the original sources incorporated in the historical books of the Old Testament, the origin and literary history of these books, and the important parallel Babylonian and Assyrian literature. Kent, C.F., Biblical Geography and History, New York, $1.50. A clear portrayal of the physical characteristics of Palestine and of the potent influences which that land has exerted throughout the ages upon its inhabitants. McFadden, J.E., Messages of the Prophets and Priestly Historians, New York, $1.25. A fresh and effective interpretation of the historical and spiritual messages of the Old Testament historical books into the language of thought of today. Smith, H.P., Old Testament History, New York, $2.50. A thorough, well-proportioned presentation of the unfolding of Israel's history. Wilson, Woodrow, Constitutional Government in the United States, $1.50. A constructive judgment of the American Constitution. Seeley, J.R., Introduction to Political Science, $1.50. An effective example of the application of the historical methods to politics. End of Introduction this recording by hearhis.com.